What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC video. This one's gonna go up on Friday, I think? Yes, this video goes up on Friday, so uh, if you're watching this, that means that the uh, Orlando Regional for TCG at the very least has begun and tomorrow the VGC tournament starts, so I'm gonna be competing in that. As this goes up, I'm probably gonna be like driving from work to the airport, so you know, wish me luck, hopefully I do good. But uh, we have Neil VGC here on again. Uh, he's the guy who ruined the last recording. Uh, but <laughs> how's it going, dude? It's great. It's great. You know, we just come off a fun recording. Didn't go too well, but it's at fine. least we're doing something more serious it's now. Yeah, no. So actually, this is kind of serious. We're going to talk about, because the first Series 2 tournament, the first official Series 2 tournament, I mean, like we've had tons of non-official Series 2 tournaments. Um, it starts tomorrow. So... We're going to talk about Pokemon that were good in Series 1, but now that Series 2 has rolled around, they're either not so good or just outright bad. So, if you guys enjoyed this same point in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, uh, and yeah, you know, leave a like if you enjoy it. Uh, did I already say that? Did I say leave a like? Mm -mm. Alright, well, yeah, also check out my Patreon, Twitch sub, and YouTube member program where you just get like a free video, or an extra video at the top every week. It's not free, it's it's for supporting the channel, but yeah, let's get into this. So, do you want to talk about Mur- you have a whole video about Murkrow. Uh, Neil, I'm gonna, you know, obviously go to Neil's channel, but Neil has a whole video talking about Murkrow and why it's not good anymore, but let's give him like the spark notes here. Yeah, you were in it too. I was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, the thing about Murkrow is that like there's Fluttermane, but the main thing is that it's not it's not the Pokemon that beat Murkrow. It's that speed control is so much better when you have Roaring Moon, Fluttermane, like Booster Energy Bundle, and there's like a bunch of Trick Room setters too. And there's also like a lot more bulk now. So like Murkrow as this like Tailwind setter that just clicks Tailwind for like Garchomp or Goldango, you can't really run through things anymore and speed control comes from other things, so yeah, it's and like, I mean, I remember like at the beginning of Series 1, Murkrow was literally like either number 2 or number 1 in usage. And now, it's like, it's it's still fine, right? Like, that's why it's like a number 5 on the list, but it's niche. As of right now, it's 19th in usage on the Series 2 ranked ladder, which it's day 1 of, so. Yeah, like Murkrow, Murkrow realistically won't do too well at the event. Maybe there's one team with like Murkrow Garchomp, because that's a decent call into this format. But like Town Flame is even better because if you want to beat Don Dozo, you can just whisk the Don Dozo, switch the Town Flame out, and then all your partners beat Dozo. Yeah, and I mean like even like niche Pokemon that like are also Tailwind setters do pretty well into like the same things Murko does because Murko beats Don Dozo with Haze, where like Kilowatcher beats Don Dozo with Electro Ball with a Wind Power Boost. <laughs> So like there there yeah. are options, right? And also it's it's I feel like it's the competition, right? Like it's it's Talonflame, it's Kilowattro, but now it's also Roaring Moon with a booster energy or booster energy iron jugulus, which was like a out of nowhere Pokemon that I didn't actually expect to be that great. It's it, like booster energy iron jugulus is just like offensive Murkrow. Right? Yeah, and it gets gnarled too, so. Yeah, like it can support the team. It has really strong hurricanes. Yeah, I definitely noticed that. Like, special attack good, terrifying, hurricane, hard to switch into. Yeah, and I mean, like, Murkrow's still fine next to, like, Golden Go if you want to do, like, Choice Specs, Haze, Make It Rain stuff. Like, it's it's gonna work, right? But it's just, there are more things that beat it. There's Fluttermane, Iron Hands especially, Murkrow's just, just dead meat in front of. Iron Bundle can one-shot a Murkrow because they tend to have to invest in physical defense, so, like, as soon as that special defense is gone, you know, as soon as it gets hit on the special side with, like, a Freeze Dry, it's, like, completely annihilated. So right, Vance stole yeah. a thing, and Garganical usage just picked up so much, and Murkrow does nothing versus Garg, it just drops. Yeah, and like, I think Bax Calibre will pick up at the regional as well, so there's that. Yeah, Bax is really great too. So, Murkrow, number 5, not not a great Pokemon anymore. Let's go ahead and give him his number 5 title. Uh, Neil, you want to introduce number 4? Number 4 is Dreadnought. Yeah, so Dreadnought, it like top, did it top 8 or top 4 the uh, San Diego regional? It actually top four. It was like it was like Life Orb, Dreadnought, Terra, Grass. Like that thing was really good. But now Torkoal's kind of coming, and there's like other things that are just faster. Yeah, and I don't even think it's like Torkoal. I think it's that people have realized that Palafin does like everything that Dreadnought wants to do, which is better, you know? Yeah. And the one need Dreadnought over Palafin was that you can immediately click Rock Slide. But now there's Iron Bundle, which is literally faster with booster energy. So like your your Swift Swim actually doesn't make a difference. 
Yeah, and even with like the focus sash sets, you're relying on a flinch to beat Iron Bundle. So in both situations, it's at best a, because you have like bad special defense, right? It's it's at best a 30% chance to beat Iron Bundle because you need to get a, a flinch into another attack. And if they're booster energy, they just outspeed you and one shot you with freeze dry, regardless of what set you're running. If you're, you know, water rock, you're getting one shot by freeze dry. If you tear a grass, you're getting one shot by freeze dry. Yeah, and like, I think even if you tear a rock, like, they can just hydro pump if they see that in open sheet. And then, like, at that point, you, they still have favorable odds. That's true. And you know what just absolutely makes Dreadnought not good anymore? What? It's Iron Hands. Iron Hands just annihilates Dreadnought. It's got huge physical defense. We just, oh, yeah, like, true. look at this. Actually, let me look at him over here. Huge physical yeah, defense. 154 HP, 108 defense, and it always runs Drain Punch. So it's just like, okay, cool. You rock slided me. I took 10%. Now give me all of my health back. Yeah, I think the only way to use Dreadnought if like if, if it does ever come back is like Shell Smash. Oh yeah, I got that this gen, didn't it? Yeah, some of the Japanese players were running like Shell Smash with Ndidi. They get into Pelipper and they just like Terra plus Helping Hand and that's it. I think, yeah, I think that is like the only way. And I think you have to run like Terra Rock too, just to make sure you're actually getting KOs. Yeah, Terra Rock or Water. Like Liquidation is also nice. You just have to know what you're targeted to. Yeah. Uh, but overall, like this guy, it used to be decent just because of what was common in the metagame. If we look at like Series 1 stats, like, you know, the number one Pokemon was Golden Go. It, you know, you can hit that with a crunch, you can hit it with a, a ground move. I think, did they usually run like Stomping Tantrum? Not always, but like they would sometimes have it. I think it was usually crunch. But yeah, you would have ground coverage for a few things. Meow Scarada, you would have to Sucker Punch you to outspeed. So it's another one of those like flinch situations where if you get the flinch, you win. Liquidation into Sylveon had potential to one shot if you were Terra Water Life Orb. There's a lot of options for it to actually just get in and do stuff. And towards the end, when Bex Caliber picked up, like it was nice for rock sliding into. So, yeah. Yeah. Like, I, the, I was pretty good into Meluka. And, like, Meluka had to play really well. Yeah. So, honestly, Dreadnought just heavily, heavily fell off. It's going to be our number four. And honestly, so the way that we're ordering this is like you're, you're higher on the list, or I guess your number is higher with one how do i say it? you're closer to number one either the more you fell off or just the worse of a pokemon you are we're, we're sort of going like in, in tiers here because like dreadnought was always like just like a high mid tier and now it's just like a low tier which is why it's number four where like murkrow was like a high tier and now it's like a high mid tier you know what i mean like it, it didn't fall too far it's based on the distance fallen <laughs> so yeah. Number number three, this one's sad. It's gonna be Tauros Fire. I wanted it to be Aqua, but Neil pointed out to me that Fire is a better a better one to put here because we did see some Tauros Fire top cut events, um, and it was basically just like fast Arcanine. It was really good into a few things. It had better physical defense than Arcanine, and it still had access to like Will O Wisp while also having Raging Bull to break screens because we did see some screens users. Whether it was a Bomb of Snow, which just drops to Raging Bull, or if it was uh, Grim Snarl. You break those screens, you deal damage. It's just like a good Pokemon. You also had access to like close combat as like your main stab move. And you could run like mirror herb sets, which is really good into King Gambit because you would immediately give him a defiant boost and then you'd be up to plus two with a base 100 Pokemon. Like you just KO things at that point. Yeah, and like into Dondozo, you can just willow us, but immediately with plus two. I think yeah. the issue now is that like 100 base speed was really good at the start of the format like series one but now 100 base speed is not enough so that like kind of makes a special bulk really something lackluster mm -hmm. and then also uh what else was it don dozo's kind of fallen off a bit and like there's other ways to beat dozo dozo also have like chesto so you can't really use wisp as well yeah and i think another big one that we're not mentioning is um that this thing's half fighting type which means it actually takes neutral damage from fluttermane where Arcanine, the Pokemon that's basically taken over its spot, takes resisted damage. It doesn't care. Like Shadow Ball, yeah, it's still going to hit you for neutral, but at the very least, Arcanine has like a special defense stat. This guy, you know, it's got 75 HP, 70 special defense. That's yeah, like, and like, is that like Absol Bulk? That's like Absol Bulk. 65, 6, mm -hmm. never mind, it's still better. But <laughs> yeah, special defense wise, it's not doing well. And it, it needs Will O Wisps, like Assault Vest isn't that good, where Arcanine can just eat the hit and it also gets access to Snarl. Yeah, and like Snarl is so useful because people are running in DD armors all of a sudden, especially Ladder. Like Ladder's just full of that. Yeah. So I think Arcanine, just so much better in this dude. Just 100%. Bad Pokemon now. Goodbye. Bad. I mean, you can still get away with it, obviously. I think I, I saw it top cut a Series 2 tournament recently, but I don't remember what the team was. It still works. It's just like, 
it's not nearly the level it was at before. Yeah. Uh, do you know what our number two pick is, Neil? Oh, there's number two already? Oh, shoot. Yeah, um, we're already at number two. Yeah, Swampert. No, I'm kidding. Hydreigon. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, Hydreigon, this one's weird because I made a short talking about why, like, Hydreigon is better than Iron Jugulus. And now I have to eat my words just because, like, it just feels like there's no place for Hydreigon in the format, at least not in the same way it was in Series 1, because Hydreigon was like a top three Pokemon for a couple of weeks there. Yeah, I think the other thing is that, like, I still think Hydra is better than Jugulus. It's just, I don't think either Jugulus or Hydra are good. Yeah, no, no, but like Hydra's place overall has fallen. It's it's closer to Jugulus than it is to Fluttermane, you know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. Like, the, the thing you can do with this, I guess, is like Focus Sash Tailwind. That's true, that's true. But also now it has to deal with like Roaring Moon, which they tend that's to just run Breaking Swipe as like their main Dragon Stab, but some of them are running Dragon Claw. And like Dragon Claw can like one shot a Hydreigon if it has the attack boost, so like that's an issue. Um, they also are probably, if you like lead off versus it and they don't want to go for an attack, you're probably just gonna like match Tailwinds, at which point the Roaring Moon's still just faster than you. And it's it's literally like a Dragon and dark type it, it, flutter main is number one in usage right now on ladder and in iron hands too iron hands beats like every set that flutter main doesn't the terra steel set assault vest drain punch like it takes it takes like maybe 40 from a draco meteor if this thing's not running life orb yeah the craziest thing is that like iron hands and flutter main have like incredibly good synergy like like yeah. that's obviously a topic but those two pair together so well yeah honestly hands just pairs well with everything Right, like hand butter main bundle, like it fits onto any team. Uh, yeah, no, like just it's it's one of the best combos in the game. I don't think it's like broken. It's just like extremely splashable. You know what I mean? It's just consistent. Yeah. It's like the combo where if you don't know much about the game and you see the official stream, you're like everyone has the same three. Yeah, but I mean, a any notes on Hydreigon? Like another reason, like maybe it's just not at the same level. Um. Oh, speed as well. Like. Oh yeah, 98 is not cutting it anymore. Yeah, because like, I guess what you could have done is run like Choice Scarf Hydra, which was actually like pretty underrated in Series 1, but now there's like boosters, so it doesn't work. Yeah, you could like justify Hydreigon at like 98 speed before because it was like, hey, it's faster than Golden Go, which is the hardest hitter we basically have. So as long as you outspeed it and one shot it with Dark Pulse, like who cares? But now it's like, oh, well, you're getting outsped by like four of our hardest hitters now. And while it does have really good like bulk in 92, 90, 90, it's just not cutting it. Like you're not like the hardest hitters are the hardest hitters for a reason. They're gonna one shot this thing. Yeah, because they're they all hit a super effective. I think mm -hmm. it's pretty unfortunate. Hydra. And yeah. then our number one is Oh yeah, number one. The biggest fall from Grace ever. And I know exactly why this happened. Do you wanna know why Mousehold is no longer like even remotely good in my opinion? why well it's still fine you know population mode still a thing you know follow me still a thing but it's not like if if it were like an a tier before it is now like a c tier at best i think the reason that mousehold is no longer good is because 111 used to be a crazy speed stat in season in series one and now it's just not it's just not that fast like you have meowskarata that outspeeds it you have iron bundle that outspeeds it you have what else in a roaring moon uh, you have Iron Moth, which is still getting usage. We still see like Scarf Garganical. There's more Tailwind users that are like in like obviously like you know Roaring Moon and Iron Jugulus. They can like Tailwind and then something else outspeeds it. And Mousehold cannot run Focus Sash and still do its job. It pretty much has to run Wide Lens, and it has it has abysmal bulk. It is just dropping to yeah. literally everything. So the fact like, that it can't get that guaranteed one turn live means it's just not doing anything. Right? Yeah, like the only way you can use Mouse Sold, in my opinion, is if it's close sheet and your opponents, like you expect your opponents to leave something faster. Then you can go with Sash Mouse Sold, lead Mouse Sold plus Armor Rouge. Not weakness policy proc, but just have Life Orb Armor Rouge under Trick Room and just follow me, Trick Room. They lead their fast stuff and then you can clean through. Yeah, but that's Mouse Sold just bad now. <laughs> yeah. Like Mouse Sold Annihilate is like okay, but also like. Especially, like, if your opponents know your Annihilate set and all, and, like, your Mousehold set, if it's not, like, Pop Bomb, then they can just lead faster stuff, and you're, you they just overwhelm. Yeah, it's it's a real shame, because Mousehold was, like, a, just, it was, it was, like, no one expected it to be good, and then it just was. And now, 
it's just not. I think in every, if, if mouse holds in a regional format, it's just always going to be good, but it's never going to be good outside of regional decks. Yeah. And like now, like organic was so common. So there's that and like intimidate. So like, yeah, that worse for it. And like Rocky helmet is like a super common item. Now people ran it for mouse hold before, but you know, now it's also just good into iron hands. Like there's yeah. a lot of reasons to run Rocky helmet. So mouse hold, unfortunately is our number one. So that's going to be Murkrow, Dreadnought, Tauros Fire, Hydreigon, and Mousehold as our top five Pokemon that are no longer good in Series 2. How do I even title this? Like, Oh yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, Pokemon that were good in Series 1 but are awful in Series 2. How about that? No. Pokemon Series 1 that suck in Series 2. That's probably going to be the title or something close to it. I'll ask, I'll ask Michael. He's, he's good with thumbnails, but yeah. That's going to be it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoy, leave a like, subscribe, check out the Patreon slash YouTube sub slash Twitch membership program. And uh, Neil, you got anything you want to say? Mm, no, not much. Uh, let, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Very interested to read. Yeah. All right. But that's going to be it, guys. Have a nice one. Goodbye.